The first question is actually very tricky because we are looking at a differential equation, right? And the shock wave in the differential equation represents a location where the spatial derivative and time derivatives probably doesn't exist. Okay, we have a discontinuity in space and uh, potentially in time. So how do we know that, uh, uh, how do we analyze from the differential equation if the solution, if the discontinuity shock wave should be moving towards the left or right? Okay. The answer to that question is, we shouldn't be looking at the differential equation. What we should be looking at is the physics. And what is the physics in this case? The physics is the conservation law that we use to derive the differential equation. Finite volume scheme actually doesn't really apply to any differential equation. It only applies to differential equations that are derived or can be derived from a conservation law. So what does that mean? That means finite volume schemes applies to this kind of differential equations. It, it, it applies to differential equations that can be written in such a form, du dt plus df of u dx equal to zero, okay? And this, well, in reality, it applies to uh, functions where the f of u can depend on, the f can depend on u and the du dx, et cetera. Basically, uh, it's zero. So essentially, you, the kind of equation that can be represented as a time derivative plus a spatial derivative of something equal to zero. And this f here is the flux, okay? All right, so let me keep this open. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for chatting over here. Okay, so this f is called uh, the flux. And the reason this is derivable from the conservation law is that once you integrate it, once you integrate the left hand side over dx, over any volume left to right, what you get is something very similar to what we already did before. So we have a spatial derivative, or we have a time derivative of, of the total integrated stuff within the volume, plus the function f, evaluated at r minus evaluated at l equal to zero. Another, another way to interpret this is the time derivative of the total conserved stuff is equal to the difference between the flux at the left of the domain and on the right of the domain, right? I mean, here, I am, I'm actually using the fundamental theorem of calculus as uh, Megan pointed out. So this is a conservation law, right? Whenever you say, okay, how does the total amount of stuff within the volume changes? It's actually equal to the flux coming in from the left minus flux coming out from the right. Well, that's a conservation law. Okay, we are gonna see this uh, not only for this one dimensional problem, but also for multi-dimensional problems later on. All right, so, this actually gives us a very, the, although the differential form doesn't give us a way to analyze the speed of the shock, this integral form gives us a very clear way to analyze how a discontinuity would move. So let's look at this. Let's look at a solution, a potential solution u as a function of x at one particular time. And imagine we have a discontinuity. On the left of the discontinuity, the solution is UL, a constant. On the right of the discontinuity, the solution is UR, another constant. All right. I'm going to ask, if 
the green curve represents you at a particular time. And I want a red curve representing a u at t plus a very, very small dt, an infinitesimal dt. And I imagine the shock wave would be moving, the discontinuity would be moving at a speed of, let's say, us. Us is the speed of shock. How would the solution look like at u at t plus delta t? 